good evening friends welcome to the nurse channel so i am a new face for you uh, myself nishad ikbal and uh, i am a nursing officer uh, so today as advertised we will be dealing with one of the important topic from uh, psychiatric nursing that is defense mechanism and as you all know uh, studying defense mechanism is interesting but it is little confusing also so today uh, i'll try my level best to make you understand thoroughly about the defense mechanisms with some examples also so before going in detail to the topic uh, i request everybody who not yet subscribed the channel kindly subscribe the channel and uh, if you like the video kindly share this video to your nursing friends so so we'll be moving to the topic and uh, there is a slight change in the pattern of uh, discussion today okay today we will be discussing some theoretical part and then we will be moving on to the question so there will be theory plus question and answer so it will be little more interesting for you so we will move on to the topic so our topic on discussion today is defense mechanism so what is defense mechanism so first i will explain to you what is defense mechanism in simple words okay so in our daily life we will be having so many stresses so many anxiety provoking situations these like these situations we have to manage or cope with this stress and anxieties so for managing this stress and coping with this uh, anxieties we have to formulate some mechanisms and these mechanisms are unknowingly or unconsciously we are doing and these mechanisms are actually uh, termed as defense mechanisms so i'll tell you once again in our daily life we have to meet so many we'll have so many anxious situations we have to cope up with so many stressful situations so to deal with these stresses unknowingly our psychology or our mind will afford some mechanisms and these mechanisms are termed as defense mechanism so uh, before going in depth to the topic i'll tell you a little about the history of defense mechanism so who explained the defense mechanism first you know father of psychoanalysis sigmund freud so sigmund freud's theory of psychoanalysis you know very well and uh, he has explained about three concepts that like uh, id ego and superego so i'm not going in detail to these concepts because we will have a separate uh, uh what to say separate uh, video we will do for that so in the psychoanalysis sigmund freud has explained about nearly 10 defense mechanisms and later her daughter anna freud her daughter name is anna freud and she studied in detail about these defense mechanism what her father studied so she studied in detail and in 1936 she published a book named the ego and the mechanisms of defense so that is the first book ever in the history that uh, explains about defense mechanism so that much about the uh, history of defense mechanism so i think we can move to the questions okay so aruna jeram and sir yeah good evening yes good evening deepika yeah so okay so we'll move to the questions okay so the first question an unconscious psychological mechanism that reduces anxiety arising from unacceptable or potentially harmful stimuli is called as i repeat the question an unconscious psychological mechanism that reduces anxiety arising from unacceptable or potentially harmful stimuli is called as so the options are homeostasis defense mechanism ego centralism intrinsic mechanism so the answer is so i have already explained that is none other than defense mechanism so this is the classical definition of defense mechanism okay so moving to the next question which theory explained well about defense mechanism okay which theory explained well about defense mechanism so in that the options psychosexual theory psychoanalytic theory psychosocial theory cognitive development theory yeah so many have answered correctly that krishna priya 
Ashwati, Jancy, Ronald. Yeah, what you told is correct. The correct answer is psychoanalytic theory by Sigmund Freud. Okay, next. So, Sigmund Freud posited that defense mechanisms work by distorting the id impulses into acceptable forms or by unconscious or conscious blockage of these impulses. And I explained earlier, Anna Freud, that is her daughter, considered these defense mechanisms as intellectual and motor automatisms of various degrees of complexity that arose in the process of involuntary and voluntary learning. So moving to the next question, the de first definitive book on defense mechanism, The Ego and the Mechanisms of Defense, which was published in 1936, was written by whom? The question, the first definitive book of defense mechanism, The Ego and the Mechanisms of Defense. So it was first written by whom? Options are Sigmund Freud, Anna Freud, Otto F. Karnab, and George Iman. So the answer is definitely Anna Freud. Anna Freud is the daughter of Sigmund Freud. So the ego and the mechanisms of defense by Anna Freud enumerated the 10 defense mechanisms that appear in the works of her father, Sigmund Freud. And these 10 defense mechanisms are uh, repression, regression, reaction formation, isolation, undoing, projection, introjections, turning against one's own person, reversal into the opposite and sublimation or displacement. Okay, So these are the 10 defense mechanisms that Sigmund Freud has explained and later the Anna Freud detailedly studied about these uh, defense mechanisms and she published the book The Ego and the Mechanisms of Defense. Okay, So we will move on to the next question. According to the psychoanalytic theory, defense mechanisms are considered to be normal, pathological, immature, abnormal. I repeat the question. According to the psychoanalytic theory, defense mechanisms are considered to be normal, pathological, immature, abnormal. So, tell the answer. What do you think? Whether these defense mechanisms, whether they are normal or not, according to the psychoanalytic theory? So, I am waiting for the answers. Yeah, uh, Krishna Priya, Ashwini, Deepika, you have quoted that the answer is A, normal. So, you are absolutely right. The correct answer is normal. So, according to Sigmund Freud, the healthy people normally use defense mechanisms throughout their life. So, when it, become, it will become pathological, a defense mechanism becomes pathological only when its persistent use leads to maladaptive behavior such that the physical or mental health of the individual is adversely affected. So, a defense mechanism becomes pathological only when we are using it continuously okay and uh, some defense mechanism we will explain in this uh, lecture some defense mechanism if we are using for a continuous period of time that can result in a maladaptive behavior so that time it will become pathological otherwise all defense mechanisms are normal according to Freudian theory understood so shall we move to the next question okay before going to the next question again some a little about the uh, categorization okay so uh, kindly listen the thing is actually we have to classify the defense mechanisms then we can understand these defense mechanisms very clearly okay so after Sigmund Freud and Anna Freud so many psychologists and psycho uh, uh, psychologists and psychiatrists they have studied well about defense mechanisms so in these studies I have taken a categorization made by George Iman Valent. Okay, a categorization by George Iman Valent. Why I have take, chosen this categorization to our lecture means because he has categorized the defense mechanisms into four levels. Okay, he has categorized the defense mechanisms into four levels, and each level he has made defense mechanism into different categories. So it will be easy for us to understand. So we will see what are the categories he made and these categories are named as valent categories valent categories okay so the categorization of defense mechanism so uh, the first is the level one categorization and this level one categorization he has mentioned pathological defense mechanisms okay so level one of valence categorization include Pathological defenses. Pathological defenses are examples are denial, the most important denial, distortion, and delusional projection. So we will be dealing with all these defense mechanisms later in the session. 
So just now you just uh, go through which all are the pathological defense mechanisms. So it can be easily remembered as 3D, like that means denial, distortion, delusional projection. And these pathological defense mechanisms can be seen in patients with psychiatric disorders, especially with the psychotic symptoms like schizophrenia and sorry. So the next level is the level two. And in the level two of categorization, Iman George, George Iman Valen categorized immature defense mechanisms. So level two includes immature defense mechanisms. And the examples for immature defense mechanisms are hypochondriasis, acting out, passive aggressive behavior and schizoid fantasy. So the level two or immature defense mechanisms include hypochondriasis, acting out, passive aggressive behavior, schizoid fantasy. Understood? I think you can uh, following me. Uh, I'm not going in a high speed. I think so. Okay. So we have explained about the level one, level two. Now moving to level three. Level 3 defense mechanisms include neurotic defense mechanisms. Level 3 includes neurotic defense mechanism. So some examples are the most important displacement, dissociation, intellectualization, rationalization, repression, regression and reaction formation. So level 3 includes neurotic defense mechanism. So what is this neurotic defense mechanism? Neurotic. The thing is actually in the beginning itself we have explained so some defense mechanisms it will give a short term short term cure for our stresses that short term relief of our anxiety but if you are using these defense mechanisms for a longer period and it can result in a maladaptive behavior and that can finally leads to development of psychiatric disorders so these neurotic defense mechanisms we have to use only for a short period of time if we are using it for a continuous period of time, then what will happen is we will be continuously depending upon these type of defense mechanisms and in future there are chances that we will be suspect susceptible for developing psychiatric disorders. Okay, so these defense mechanisms are categorized under level 3 that is neurotic defense mechanisms. So the final one is the level 4 that includes mature defense mechanisms. Mature defense mechanisms, defense mechanisms means healthy defense mechanisms that everyone can follow and these defense mechanism examples are altruism humor anticipation sublimation okay so level four of four that is mature defense mechanisms include altruism humor anticipation sublimation so understood no this is the categorization of defense mechanism by george iman Wayland. okay so uh, one thing i forgot to tell you regarding these defense mechanisms if you see any competitive exams, you can expect at least minimum two questions. So I believe that at the end of this session, uh, you will be able to answer any questions from defense mechanism. Okay. So our categorization got over. So next. So the next question. Who introduced a four level classification of defense mechanisms? Who introduced a four level classification of defense mechanism? So the options are Sigmund Freud, Anna Freud, George Iman Valent, and Robert Prochik. Sigmund Freud, Anna Freud, George Iman Valent, and Robert Prochik. So as I explained earlier, the correct answer is George Iman Valent. So he categorized the defense mechanisms into four levels ranging from level one to level four. Okay. So next question, level one of valence categorization of defense mechanism include which type of defenses? So the question is which type of defenses are included in the level one of valence categorization? So it include uh, ex uh, options are pathological defenses, immature defenses, neurotic defenses, mature defenses. So what is the answer? Yes, that is pathological defenses. So level one include pathological defenses like uh, psychotic denial, denial, delusional projection and distortion. Okay. So moving to the next question. Defense mechanisms like fantasy, projection, passive aggression and acting out. These defense mechanisms are categorized under which level of valence categorization? 
I repeat, defense mechanisms like fantasy, projection, passive aggression, and acting out. These defense mechanisms are categorized under which level of valence categorization? So the options are level 1, level 2, level 3, and level 4. So the answer is yes, level 2. So level 2 are immature defense mechanisms. Okay. See, level 2 includes immature defenses like fantasy, projection, passive aggression, acting out, etc. Clear? Okay, moving to the next question. Neurotic defenses are categorized under which level of valence categorization of defense mechanisms? Question is, neurotic defenses are categorized under which level of valence categorization of defense mechanisms? So, the options are level 1, level 2, level 3 and level 4. So, neurotic defenses. What is the answer? Yes. Reena, Appu, Priyanka, Sau, Ashwini. Yes, exactly. What you have told is right. The answer is level 3. So, level 3 includes neurotic defenses like intellectualization, reaction formation, dissociation, displacement, repression and so many other defenses are there. Okay. So, next question. Which defenses are categorized in level 4 category of valence categories of defense mechanism? Which defenses are categorized in the level 4 category of valence categories of defense mechanism? So, the options are pathological defenses, immature defenses, neurotic defenses, mature defenses. So, answer? Yes, level 4. Yeah, Sumati... Deepika, yeah, you are right. So, the answer is mature defenses. So, level 4 include mature defenses like humor, sublimation, suppression, altruism and anticipation. Okay. Okay. So, the next question. Immature defenses are often seen in which psychiatric diseases? Question is, immature defenses are often seen in which psychiatric diseases so the options are major depression personality disorders sexual disorders both in major depression and personality disorder so immature defenses are often seen in which psychiatric diseases whether it is in major, major depression personality disorders sexual disorders both in major depression and personality disorders yeah, again, Ashwati, Jyoti, Shijin. Yeah, you are right. The answer is both in major depression and personality disorder. So, the so-called immature defenses and, and its overuse almost always leads to serious problems in a person's ability to cope effectively. And these immature defenses are often seen in major depression and personality disorders. Is it clear? Okay, then moving to the next question so question is a gross reshaping of external reality to meet internal needs is which type of pathological defense mechanism so once again you read the question clearly some clues are there in the question itself a gross reshaping of external reality to meet the internal needs is which type of pathological defense mechanism so the options are delusional projection, denial, distortion, all the above. Options are delusional projection, denial, distortion, all the above. So, any guesses? So, the answer is distortion. So, distortion, what is distortion? A cognitive distortion is an exaggerated or irrational thought pattern involved in the onset or perpetuation of psychopathological states such as depression and anxiety and i know very clearly that uh, this definition it will be it will be a little difficult for you to understand so i can explain it to you with the help of an example so we are uh, talking about the distortion defense mechanism so i'll tell you an example uh, recently uh, in south india i think in kerala an incident happened 
okay a mother he killed she killed his son by cut, uh, cutting with the knife okay and uh, when the police was interrogated her the answer from her was it was quite bizarre she was telling like uh, the son was given by the god and when the god asked i given my son back and there is no uh, wrong in that she was telling to the police like that i killed my son why because the god has given me the son and god asked me to give him back so i given him so what here happened is the pakka external reality what was the reality he she killed her son so she is telling that she is just distorting that means she is just turning all what happened into an another thing like because of some commands because the god has requested her to give the son back so she killed the son so she has changed what the reality is so that is called the distortion i think now you understand now we will read this uh, definition once again a cognitive distortion distortion is an exaggerated or irrational thought pattern involved in the onset or perpetuation of psychopathological states such as depression and anxiety and uh, the so called mother no and later they have uh, told that she had some history of psychiatric diseases and uh, she was diagnosed with schizophrenia so this as i explained earlier cognitive distortion is a pathological defense mechanism and it is seen in uh, patients with psychotic symptoms like schizophrenia understood that is cognitive distortion so the example you can remember that mother killed son based on a command so moving to the next question best known defense mechanism used often to describe situations in which people seem unable to face reality or admit an obvious truth so i'll repeat the question a best known defense mechanism which is used often to describe situations in which people seem unable to face reality or admit an obvious truth so which is that defense mechanism the options are regression denial displacement projection so answer yes ashwini yes bhupendra pooja dikshit yeah that is denial this is denial actually so we will see what denial is so denial functions to protect the ego from things with which the individual cannot cope okay so i'll uh, um, explain to you uh, what is denial a little bit uh, i'll explain to you what is denial so uh, denial in the valence categorization he has placed the denial in the pathological defense mechanism but denial in a normal life we are also facing uh, denial situations for example uh, uh, people who are working in the opds you will be coming around patients who were diagnosed with new diseases so when the blood report comes or when the doctor is saying that you are hypertensive or you are diabetic first the patients will be uh, some patients they will be very much reluctant to accept the fact okay they will tell that no 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 i won't get this disease maybe the blood report was wrong no 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 i am very healthy i won't get hypertension and i am controlling my diet very nicely and how i will get diabetes like that the first the reality it will be very difficult to accept they, they won't cope up with the reality so this defense mechanism is called as the denial understood so why denial is considered as pathological why the thing is actually george wayland what he did was he did studies in some psychiatric patients so if denial is present in a psychiatric patient and it will definitely affect the treatment program because the patient won't accept the fact that he is having some psychological or psychiatric disorder so he will not be ready to take up the uh, treatment and the prognosis also will be very difficult without the cooperation of the patient so that's why uh, wayland has categorized this denial as a pathological defense mechanism understood so that is denial so understood no so now we'll move to the next question yeah an immature defense mechanism so immature defense mechanism in which direct expression of an unconscious wish or impulse in action without conscious awareness of the emotion that drives the expressive behavior is called i'll repeat the question an immature defense mechanism in which the direct expression of an unconscious wish or impulse in action without conscious awareness of the emotion 
that drives the expressive behavior is called so the options are projection acting out passive aggressive behavior schizoid fantasy so one clue is there in the question itself it is an uh, uh, immature defense mechanism so what is the answer so the answer is acting out so we will see what is acting out so in the psychology of defense mechanisms and self control acting out is the performance of an action considered to be bad or antisocial i know uh, you didn't understand anything from this from the definition itself also uh, you i know you didn't understand anything but i can explain to you with an example okay uh, i'll tell you an example okay a group of children they are playing in the play, uh, in the classroom okay in that one child she don't like the other child we can name the child as a so the child a don't like child b okay so in acting out what this child a is doing is instead of telling her telling the child b that i don't like you what she is doing is she just throw a book over her face okay this is what is acting out understood now so uh, she can tell okay i don't like you i don't want to play with you instead of telling like that what she did is she just thrown a book over her face so that is acting out so in the psychology of defense mechanisms and self control acting out is a performance of an action which is considered bad or anti social and in general usage the action performed is destructive to self or to others understood now and in general usage the action performed is destructive to self or to others so remember this example that uh, all these are uh, immature defense mechanism that is childish uh, defense mechanisms so what was the issue that that child doesn't like the other child so she didn't tell that she didn't tell uh, okay i don't like you she didn't tell that but what she did she just thrown a book over her face because she don't she didn't like her okay so that is acting out i think uh, now this is clear with the example okay okay so going to the next question an excessive preoccupation or worry about having a serious illness is termed as i repeat the question an excessive preoccupation or worry about having a serious illness is termed as the options are projection acting out hypochondriasis schizoid fantasy options are projection acting out hypochondriasis schizoid fantasy i think you all will be knowing this answer yeah uh i 20 priyanka bupendra ashwini priyanka reena deepika vijay yeah you answered correctly the correct answer is hypochondriasis so you'll see what is hypochondriasis hypochondriasis or hypochondria is a condition in which a person is excessively and unduly worried about having a serious illness okay so hypochondriasis we can see patients uh, in the psychiatric setups we can see the patients uh, and uh, among us also we can see people who are who are having a minor disease will be explained to a health worker like a serious illness for example if a person having mild headache okay so he will be explaining like he is having brain tumor and he believes that he is having brain tumor understood and uh, what happens in their life is they will be so much worried and they will be so much tensed all the time and uh, if uh, they they were asked for some investigations to rule out this disease they prefer the last sort of investigation first for example concerned with the headache they may prefer some mri brain than getting a consultation with a doctor so that is hypochondriasis so hypochondriasis or hypochondria is a condition in which a person is excessively and unduly worried about having a serious illness that is hypochondriasis understood so we will move to the next question so name a defense mechanism in which the ego defends itself against unconscious impulses or qualities which are both positive or negative by denying their existence in themselves and by attributing them to others i repeat the question name a defense mechanism in which the ego defends itself against unconscious impulses or qualities and these qualities may be both positive and negative by denying their existence in themselves by attributing them to others what is this defense mechanism called so the options are denial projection repression 
sublimation. Options are denial, projection, repression, sublimation. So exam, in exam point of view, this is a very, very, very important defense mechanism. So what is the answer? So yeah, so many have uh, uh, answered correctly. Uh, Benny Bobis, uh, Pooja Dikshit, Ashwini, Pooja Dikshit, uh, sorry, uh, Ashwini. Yeah, yes, the answer is projection. So what is projection so that we have explained already in the uh, definition again i will uh, tell you what is projection before that we will uh, see an example okay a person who is confused will project their own feelings of confusion and inadequacy on other people that is an example okay so a person who is confused will project their own feelings of confusion and inadequacy on other people so i'll tell you with another example okay again two persons okay person a and person b okay and uh, uh, in this situation the person a he doesn't like person b so what he is telling is person b doesn't like me so she hates me that's all so what is he she is doing he is doing is person a already he don't like person b so he is not expressing that i am, I am not liking her but he is telling that she doesn't like him so that is a problem so just transferring just projecting her call his qualities that quality is a negative quality that is uh, he doesn't like she so what he is telling is she doesn't like him that's why uh, we are in clash okay so just transferring or projecting that emotion to another person and he is denying he is not telling that i don't like her she, he is not telling like that but he is tell, just attributing that impulses to the other person okay that is projection okay understood now okay so moving to the next question yeah uh, i think you can answer it very easily next question mr a hates miss b but his superego tells him that such hatred is unacceptable. He solved the problem by believing that Miss B hates him. What defense mechanism did Mr. A show? I think already I have explained this question. So Mr. A hates Miss B. But his superego tells him that such hatred is unacceptable. And he solved the problem by believing that Miss B hates him. So what defense mechanism did Mr. A show? So the options are a regression projection, rationalization, displacement. So what is the answer? Yes, definitely that is projection. So projection is a psychological defense mechanism proposed by Anna Freud in which an individual attributes unwanted thoughts, feelings and motives onto another person. So here an individual is attributing unwanted thoughts, unwanted thoughts, feelings and motives. That here the unwanted thought is that uh, that person A doesn't like person B. That is an unwanted thought or unwanted feeling or the motive. And he is telling that that uh, that unlikeness is from whom? That is from the person B. That is another person. So with this example, I think projection is clear. Is it clear? Okay. So moving to the next question. Defense mechanism that shifts sexual or aggressive impulses to a more acceptable or less threatening target is question defense mechanism that shifts sexual or aggressive impulses to a more acceptable or less threatening target is and the options are dissociation displacement reaction formation rationalization i repeat the uh, options dissociation displacement reaction formation rationalization so what is the answer the defense mechanism that shifts sexual or aggressive impulses to a more acceptable or less threatening target. Yes, what is the answer? Yeah, the answer is displacement. So this is a very, very, very important defense mechanism. So we will see in detail about displacement. Okay, because you should understand this uh, defense mechanism because in exam point of view, uh, you can ex expect some questions from this. Okay. So redirecting emotion to a safer outlet or separation of emotion from its real object and redirection of the intense emotion towards someone or something that is less offensive or threatening in order to avoid dealing directly with what is frightening or threatening. 
so i'll explain what is this with the help of an example okay uh, for example uh, okay uh, today in the clinical setup you went for the uh, uh, your uh, clinical postings and in the ward uh, your supervisor your ward supervisor shouted at you very badly okay your ward supervisor shouted at you very badly so uh, in that moment uh, you become very much anxious and you much uh, you become very much stressed so you went to the bathroom and in an anger burst, burst out what you did is you broken the uh, bucket in the bathroom okay so here what happened is you had an emotional frustration that you got scolding from your ward supervisor so what you did is you didn't express your anger burst, burst out in that scenario you didn't express that but instead what you did you went to bathroom and you shown that anger burst, burst out in the towards the bucket okay so this is the example for displacement so here what happened is that emotional uh, that emotional what to say that frustration if you show to that area you will be punished if you are showing that anger burst out towards your what's up what supervisor back then some disciplinary actions will come to you and you will be punished so you know that so what you did is you have redirected that emotional stress to a non threatening object or a person that may be a living or non living object now in this example uh, you have shown that anger burst out towards a non threatening object that bucket is a non threatening object the bucket won't do anything harm to you okay so you have redirected your emotional uh, frustration to a less threatening or a uh, non threatening item or an object or a person okay so this is the classical example for displacement i think you understood okay so we will see the next question then it will be little more easy to understand okay so mr x had a hectic day in his office okay so his boss shouted at him and he was unable to react back in an anger burst out he went to bathroom and broke in the bucket so mr x exhibits which type of defense mechanism so i won't spare much time for this question because already i have explained so uh, among these options displacement regression sublimation and projection and you definitely you know the answer is projection okay oh sorry 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 uh, sorry sorry very sorry so the uh, answer is displacement okay so displacement is the redirection of an impulse usually aggression onto a powerless substitute target and the target can be a person or an object that can serve as a symbolic substitute okay so that is displacement so remember this is the example uh, emotional burst out showing to a bucket okay okay moving to the next question temporary drastic modification of one's personal identity or character to avoid emotional distress is which defense mechanism so temporary drastic modification of one's personal identity or character to avoid emotional distress is which defense mechanism the options are displacement dissociation reaction formation repression options displacement dissociation reaction formation repression so what is the answer so here what is happening is a temporary drastic modification of behavior is happening okay to uh, avoid an emotional distress okay that you keep in mind a temporary drastic modification of personal identity is character to avoid the emotional distress so which is the answer dissociation so this defense mechanism is called dissociation okay so it is any of a wide array, array of experiences ranging from a mild emotional detachment from the immediate surroundings to a more severe disconnection from physical and emotional experiences and the major characteristics of all dissociative phenomena involves a detachment from reality rather than a loss of reality as in psychosis so i'll explain to you with the help of an example okay so what is dissociation you under, uh, anything you understood about dissociation that is a temporary drastic modification of behavior is happening because our behavior we are changing to another person or we are thinking about another thing when an emotional stress is coming that is dissociation so in psychiatry dissociation it's a very vast big topic i think a chapter itself is there regarding the dissociative disorders and we will deal with this later dissociation disorders so uh, this we can explain with the help of an example 
So just see the next question. Okay, I'll tell you the example for dissociation. Just see the uh, question. A doctor who dreamt of being a classical dancer, who didn't even wish to be a doctor, thinks and dreams continuously about steps of dance. It is an example of which type of defense mechanism? I'll explain the question once again. A doctor, I, I'll uh, elaborate the question. The thing is actually, uh, uh, a doctor, she, she was a classical dancer and she wished to be in the field of classical, classical dance. But what happened is, because of her parents' pressure, she became a doctor. And whenever uh, an emotional stress comes, like to meet a patient in the OPD or to do a surgery, she won't involve in that work. Instead, she will be thinking about the and dreaming about the dance and uh, the prices he she got for the dance, etc. So this type of defense mechanism, uh, which is the which is this type of me uh, defense mechanism. So options are displacement, dissociation, rationalization, projection. So what is the answer? Yes. Yes, Priyanka. Yes, you are right. The answer is dissociation. So I'll explain. Dissociation involves feeling disconnected from a stressful or traumatic event or feeling that the event is not really happening. Okay. So in the in that example, that doctor example, so what happened is she don't want to be in the profession of medicine. So she was a dancer and she thinks always about be to become a, a, a classical dancer. So when an emotional stress comes, for, so for her this uh, uh, doctor job is a stressful or a traumatic event. So she want to escape from this stressful or the traumatic event by daydreaming. She is dreaming, okay, I am performing like this, I am getting uh, so many uh, prizes, so many uh, prizes and I am appreciable by everybody like that. Daydreaming and she is not doing what she was expected to do. She is just escaping from the reality. So this is known as dissociation. And in the definition I told that this is a drastic modification of our behavior and it is just temporary. But you should understand that this temporary can range from some minutes even to some months. Okay, that you have to keep in mind. So in detail regarding the dissociation disorders, we will have a video later. But just understand this fact, dissociation involves a temporary drastic modification of our behavior to avoid a stressful or traumatic event. Understood, no? That is dissociation. Okay. So next, next an important defense mechanism that is intellectualization. So uh, I'll explain intellectualization first, then we will go to the questions. Okay. So what is intellectualization? So intellectualization involves a person using reason and logic to avoid uncomfortable or anxiety provoking emotions. So in the word itself, you see the word intellectualization. So intellectually, what the person will do is he is he is using the reason and logic to avoid uncomfortable or anxiety provoking emotions. Okay, so I'll tell you an example, a very good example, and you will understand what is intellectualization is. Okay, so I'm inviting your attention uh, to a cancer word. Okay, in a cancer word, uh, I'll explain the conversation between a doctor and a patient okay a conversation between doctor and patient you listen carefully then you will understand intellectualization very clearly okay so the doctor enters the ward uh, and uh, uh, he told to the patient one one of the patients there and uh, uh, hello sir uh, actually last week we have sent your liver biopsy uh, and the report has come and it is uh, unfortunately it is uh, positive for cancer so hearing this uh, response from the doctor the client become the patient become very much anxious and he asked a fun question will i survive so the first question he raised was will i survive he was asking directly to the doctor will i survive then the doctor explained hey don't worry uh, your cancer is in the uh, starting stage okay it is in the earlier stage so you please don't worry uh, we can treat it okay so the doctor told that we can treat the cancer then the next question from the patient was uh, sir, is there any medicines for this? Any medicines are available for this? Then doctor told, yeah, yeah, medicines are available and uh, we can uh, we can start with some medicines. Then the next anxiety of the patient was whether these medicines are costly. Okay, sir, these medicines, whether it is costly, whether am I affordable uh, to get these medicines? 
Then the doctor replied, no, no, it's not so costly and uh, it is available in the local market. It is very uh, easily available and it is very, it's less cost. Don't worry. And if it is cost more also, don't worry. We will put on some scheme and we will provide you the medicines. Okay. Then the next question he asked was uh, whether I have to go for chemotherapy. The next question was whether I have to go for chemotherapy. Then the doctor to, uh, told, no, 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 right now you don't want any chemotherapy. We will start with these medicines. So the conversation was continuing like this. So in this, you can observe one thing that uh, uh, the client, the patient was asking questions that logic questions he was asking to reduce his anxiety. First, he came to know that he is, he is having cancer. So he want to know whether he will survive or not. That was the stress, first stress. Then he told, ask the doctor directly whether I will die. Then he got the answer, then, then that emotion or the anxiety has come down. Then the next question, whether there is treatment for this, then he got the answer. So what in this conversation, what you should understand is the client is relieving his anxiety and he's cope up with his stress by asking logic and reasonable questions and thus reducing his anxiety. Understood? No, this is the classical example for intellectualization. I think you understood the fact, okay? Intellectualization involves a person using reason and logic to avoid uncomfortable or anxiety provoking emotions. Is it clear? Okay. So, next question. Moving to the next question. Are you feeling bored? I think uh, it's little uh, confusing and a little, uh, uh, what to say, slightly boring. Okay, I'll try my level best to make you engage. So we will uh, uh, go to the next question. Uh, treating someone you strongly dislike in an excessively friendly manner in order to hide your true feelings is an example of which defense mechanism? So I repeat the question. Treating someone you strongly dislike in an excessively friendly manner in order to hide your true feelings is an example of which defense mechanism? So the options are rationalization, reaction formation, projection, repression. Options, rationalization, reaction formation, projection, repression. So what is the answer? Yes, Priyanka. Yeah, Krishna Priya told that uh, the class is interesting and Priyanka also told the class is interesting. Okay, thank you. Okay, Vijay Desai, thank you. Okay, so coming back to the question, uh, treating someone you strongly dislike in an excessively friendly manner in order to hide your true feelings. It's an example of... Sorry, sorry for the delay. Yeah, so this is the example of reaction formation the answer is reaction formation okay so what is reaction formation so reaction formation reduces anxiety by taking up the opposite feeling impulse or the behavior so in that example the uh, in the question i we have i told no so i'll show uh, i'll show the question once again see treating someone you strongly dislike okay you are not liking a person okay and you are treating that person when you are meeting that person you are dealing with him in a very friendly manner to hide your true feelings. Your, what is your true feeling? Your true feeling is you hate him. You don't like him. But uh, when you are seeing him, you are treating him in a very friendly and in very affectionate manner. So that is what is reaction formation. So what is happening is we are reducing your anxiety by taking up the opposite feeling, impulses or behavior. And it is a defense mechanism in which emotions and impulses which are anxiety producing or perceived to be unacceptable are mastered by exaggeration of the directly opposing tendency and this is this called reaction formation you understand now so reaction formation is what you are expected uh, in a situation you are doing just opposite to that to relieve that anxiety so that is the best example you are not liking a person and you can it's a funny thing actually because uh, uh, you can see in uh, uh, some relationships okay among our friends itself uh, so many people they used to tell okay i don't like that person but we will be shocked when uh, this person meet the other person they will be uh, acting very friendly okay very friendly and very affectionately they will behave so this is a defense mechanism called uh, reaction formation okay understood now so the taking the opposite belief because the true belief causes anxiety. So in that situation, uh, before meeting that person, that person will be more anxious, will be very anxious. Okay, how I'll deal him? I don't like him. So how I'll, I'll be dealing with him? 
so he is just showing the opposite of what feeling what he was expected to do so that is the reaction formation okay okay next question uh miss z okay with a childhood history of sexual abuse finds difficulty building relationship in her college life so what defense mechanism is miss a z experiencing so the question is miss z with a childhood history of sexual abuse finds difficulty building relation in her college life so what defense mechanism is miss z experiencing so the options are uh, rationalization reaction formation repression intellectualization options rationalization reaction formation repression intellectualization so what is the answer yes so the answer is repression so this also is a very very important defense mechanism in exam point of view so we will see what a repression is okay repression acts to keep information out of conscious awareness okay however these memories don't just disappear they continue to influence our behavior so i'll explain to you uh, with an example okay so uh, see some emotions we'll be having so for example the same question uh, we will see the question once again see uh, in the question it is very clear that that z is having a childhood history of sexual abuse okay so this might have happened in her uh, age like 2 years 3 years or 5 years so she has reached the college she is become an adolescent and she is going to become an adult and uh, still she finds difficult to build up relationships she already buried her emotions she she is not remembering that emotion that, that what was happened to her during her childhood time but still when situations comes when she wants to mingle with the others when she want to uh, mingle with his friends she find very difficulty to build a, a healthy relationship okay so in unconsciously she is getting phobia okay so this phobia or this uh, expression of emotion is termed as repression so uh, don't be confused so repression is uh, you can remember with a keyword that buried emotions okay so we don't want to uh, remember regarding that incident and uh, we have uh, forgotten that incident we are not remembering about that incident but subconsciously uh, it was there in our mind and when a similar situation comes we used to uh, that person will experience some sort of phobia or fear so that is called repression okay understood now so repression acts to keep information out of conscious awareness however these memories don't just disappear they continue to influence our behavior and we can uh, this key word you just keep in mind that is buried emotions understood so that is repression so we'll uh, go to other um, uh, defense mechanisms that time definitely you will have confusion we will clear that later okay so next question yeah and in, uh, a funny question okay a 30 year old lady okay see the age 30 years a 30 year old lady started crying seeing injection needle so what defense mechanism is this you just see the age of the lady she is 30 years old and she started crying seeing injection needle okay so what defense mechanism is this so options are uh, regression repression projection sublimation okay tell me what is the answer regression uh, repression projection sublimation lady is crying seeing the injection needle so the answer is regression okay so don't confuse with the repression i will tell you the differences uh, at the end of this question so we will see what is the regression okay enough to call this defense mechanism as regression suggesting that people act out behaviors from the state of psychosexual development in which they are fixated so i'll take your attention towards the psychosexual development psychosexual the stages of psychosexual you know that is uh, anal stage, oral stage. I am not going into detail of that because all these things we will explain in another video. So in the psychosexual development, certain stages are there. So in regression, regression, what is happening is when an emotional stress or an anxiety provoking situation comes, the person will go back to any of these uh, psychosexual developmental stage. So uh, see. For example, an individual fixated at an earlier developmental stage might cry 
or sulk up hearing unpleasant news and you know some people when we are telling something if whatever age they are uh, a simple thing is enough for them to cry okay so what they are doing is they are just uh, getting out of their emotions by crying and you know this crying all these things are earlier stages of our development okay so that uh, that behavior we are actually that person is not supposed to behave at that context so in our question i have told that that lady 30 year old lady seeing the injection needle she start, she started crying that means she has gone back to her earlier psychosexual developmental stage to relieve the anxiety of pricking understood so this is called as a regression so definitely you will have a confusion that what is repression and regression so regression we are regretting back that is that we are uh, going back to the earlier psychosexual developmental stage and the repression that already i have explained okay repression already we have explained that is some buried emotions that some uh, some feelings or some uh, issues what we don't want to remember when we are uh, indulging into the same situation we are getting fear that is regression and this is repression okay these examples you keep in mind the regression example is that seeing the needle lady is crying and the repression example is uh, child abuse and uh, that lady finding difficulty building the relationships so it's clear now it is uh, clear now regarding regression and repression i think you are clear now okay so uh, 25th question constructive services to others that brings pleasure and personal satisfaction is termed as the question is constructive service to others that brings pleasure and personal satisfaction is termed as options are sublimation altruism ego satisfaction ego centralism okay so constructive service to others that brings pleasure and personal satisfaction so what is this term called yeah answer yes altruism so altruism is a constructive service to others that give pleasure so it is the principle and moral practice of concern for happiness of other human beings or other animals resulting in a quality of life both material and spiritual so the thing is actually you just remember uh, think about the uh, people who are doing social service so whenever there is an emotional stress or anxiety provoking situation these people used to mingle with other people they will uh, keep a healthy relationship with other people and they will render help to the other people and uh, with that they will reduce their stress levels okay it's a very healthy and mature defense mechanism so altruism is uh, the principle and the moral practice of concern for happiness of other human beings or other animals okay uh, uh, it is not compulsory that it should uh, the help should be towards a human being it can be rendered to a, uh, an animal also okay oh, resulting in a quality of life which is both material and spiritual that is altruism understood no so moving to the next uh, question a mature mechanism to reduce the stress of some difficult challenges by anticipating what it will be like and preparing for how you are going to deal with it. What is this defense mechanism called? Question A mature defense mechanism to reduce the stress of some difficult challenge by anticipating what it will be like and preparing for how you are going to deal with it. What is this defense mechanism called? So the options are humor, anticipation, sublimation, suppression. Options, humor, anticipation, sublimation, suppression. So what is the answer? Yes. So the answer is anticipation. So what is the anticipation? It's a realistic planning for future discomfort okay so what is anticipation a realistic planning for future discomfort is called as anticipation and it is a mature defense mechanism okay so uh, i'll explain to you uh, with an example actually already our um, session has closed one hour uh, i'm taking little time more because i want to make you clear about this defense mechanisms that's why 
okay so what is uh, anticipation means i'll tell you with an example for example you are supposed to go for night duty today okay so by uh, morning itself or by evening itself you have prepared your mind that you are going for the night duty and uh, you know uh, night duty will be will not be as uh, comfortable as day duty so you have prepared your mind okay i am going to a discomfort zone and i will be having this many patients in that uh, that patient is very sick like that you are anticipating the discomfort and you are planning realistically so that defense mechanism is called what anticipation so the next question a mature type of de defense mechanism in which socially unacceptable impulses or idealizations are transformed into socially acceptable actions or behavior is termed as okay i'll repeat the question a mature type of defense mechanism in which socially unacceptable impulses or idealizations are transformed into socially acceptable actions or behavior so what is this defense mechanism called options are suppression sublimation repression sublimation i know you are confused because we have already explained about another defense mechanism which is similar to this defense mechanism so here the answer is sublimation sorry the uh, uh, option is uh, duplicated so answer is sublimation so we will see what sublimation is so sublimation is the transformation of unhelpful emotions or instincts into healthy actions behaviors or emotions so i will tell you with the example uh, already we have explained about displacement you remember in the displacement your ward supervisor scolded you you have shown that anger towards the bucket so in sublimation what is happening is when you are in a stress you are transforming it into a more uh, socially acceptable emotion for example your boss called you so what you did is in an anchor burst out you went to the gym and you did some two three push ups so that is a socially acceptable thing and there is no harm to anybody only you are benefited out of that so your emotional express emotional uh, frustration you have transformed into a more socially acceptable fact okay understood so in the displacement what is happening is when you are stressed what is happening is that you are showing that anger to a, a less threatening object and it is not there is no use for anybody because you have shown your anger to, towards the bucket and the bucket got broken but in sublimation what is happening is already you are in the anger burst out so you want to show it in a way that you go to the gym and you did some push ups or you uh, did some other physical exercises so you are benefited out of that at the same time your anxiety or your stress also have come down so that is sublimation okay so we will go to uh, uh, the next question you will understand it little more better son got murdered in a road traffic accident okay son got murdered in a road traffic accident and after few years his father started online awareness class on traffic obedience so what type of type of defense mechanism did the father exhibit understood the question son got murdered in a road traffic accident and after few years his father started online awareness class on traffic obedience so what defense mechanism did the father exhibit so the options are sublimation projection suppression reaction formation sublimation projection suppression reaction formation so as i told earlier the answer is sublimation so here what happened is father he has transforms his sadness of his son's demise and anger towards the traffic violations to a productive way of online awareness program see the son, here the father is in extreme distress because he loves his son but uh, what he did he didn't uh, be silent and he was not worrying and he was not staying at home telling that my son has gone he didn't do that but he what he did he started online awareness programs on traffic obedience that means he has transformed his uh, emotions to more healthy way and this is called as sublimation it is a very mature important defense mechanism that we can also cope up with okay that is sublimation so and another defense mechanism is the humor humor also is a defense mechanism and you uh, have noticed that among yourself also among your friends itself you have seen many friends who used to tell comics or uh, who used to make fun with, uh, with all others all the time okay so uh, many of these persons what they are doing is their suppressed emotions and anxieties they are relieving with the help of this humor telling some comics okay so this is also a healthy defense mechanism humor it is reducing the emotional conflicts by verbalizing or acting comics that is also a healthy defense mechanism just a uh, note for you okay 
Okay, so uh, we have come to the end of the session. Uh, almost uh, some nearly 15 to 20 defense mechanisms we have explained. So now uh, it's your turn. Okay, I have uh, five questions in my hand and I will tell, uh, ask you one uh, uh, after the other and you have to answer me what this defense mechanism is. Okay, so it's your time. Okay, so you check yourselves. So are you ready? Already we have closed one hour. Yeah, so the first question for you. Okay, I'll read out the question. Husband in an extramarital relationship blames wife that she is not good and have some unhealthy relations. This statement is a classical example of which defense mechanism? I'll explain the question once again. Husband who is already in an extramarital relationship blames his wife that she is not good and she is having some unhealthy relations. So this statement is an example of which defense mechanism and your options are Displacement, denial, regression, projection. So what is the answer? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, answers please. Answers. Yes, Priyanka Kumari, Puja. Priyanka Kumari, yeah. So what is the answer? Here the answer is projection. So what is happening is husband is already in an extramarital relationship. That is a negative quality. So he is having a negative quality and he is not accepting that fact that he is, a, he is in a relationship. But what he is doing is he is blaming wife. That wife is having an extramarital relationship. Okay. So he is attributing his uh, emotions to another person to escape from the stress. So that is projection. Okay. Just a note of projection. Projection refers to unconsciously taking unwanted emotions or traits you don't like about yourself and attributing them, them to someone else. Okay. So we'll move to the second question for you. Okay. Here it is. Son came back home. Okay. After terminal exam and started shouting at mother, stating that T is not good. So Keep this point, son came back home after terminal exam and started shouting at mother stating that T is not good. In this, the mother understood that his exam was tough and she kept quiet. Okay. So here two persons are there, one son and the other is mother. So son came back after the exam and started scolding mother stating that T is not good. And the mother, she understood that the exam was tough. That's why she is little irritated. So my question is, what defense mechanism is mother exhibiting? So my question here is what defense mechanism does mother exhibit? So your options are a projection, intellectualization, a rationalization and displacement. So what is the defense mechanism shown by mother? Question you please very clear. Uh, what defense mechanism did mother exhibit? Okay, what is the answer? Yeah, Krishna Priya again. So what is the answer? So here the answer is intellectualization. Why? So the mother has intellectually, yeah, he should, he, she understood that his exam was tough. So he understood the fact, otherwise mother will become tense. No, it is a uh, stressful situation because uh, son has come back home and uh, he started fighting with mother. Mother definitely will become stressed. But at that time, what mother did, she understood that, okay, he came after the exam. No, so his exam is tough. So that's why he is behaving like that. Then I can ask you one question. What defense mechanism the son is exhibiting? Yes, that is displacement because the son already his exam is very bad. Okay, so he is fully stressed. So what he is doing is he is displacing that emotions towards his mother. And that is less threatening object, less threatening person. So that is displacement. So in this example, two uh, defense mechanisms are there that what mother shown is an intellectualization by logical thinking and the, what the son did it was a displacement. Understood, no? Yeah. So intellectualization involves a person using reason and logic to avoid uncomfortable or anxiety provoking emotions. So our next question, third question for you. Mm, I think that uh, option is not there, sorry. So Miss F, a 30 year old uh, uh, lady uh, had a dog bite at the age of two. Even though she doesn't verbalize about the dog bite, still she is very much afraid even when a dog barks. What defense mechanism does Miss F exhibit? So what the defense mechanism did uh, uh, that lady exhibits because uh, a history of dog bite is there and she already forgotten about that uh, thing. But uh, um, 
she tells that uh, she is getting fear when a dog barks. So I'm very sorry that uh, that option is not there in that uh, options. The answer is actually a repression. Okay, here the answer is a repression. Okay. Okay, so the repression occurs when a thought, memory or feeling is too painful uh, for an individual. So the person unconsciously pushes the information out of the consciousness and becomes unaware of its existence. Okay, already we have explained about this. So moving to the next uh, question for you. A person who is in heavily debt builds a complex spreadsheet of how long it would take to repay using different payment options and interest rates. What's this defense mechanism called? Okay, so I'll explain the question. A person is in heavy debt. Okay, so he want to repay. Okay, debt itself is a stressful situation. So for repaying the amount, what he is doing is he has made a chart. Okay, so I have to do this payment on this month, this payment on this month, and I have to do this payment first because the interest rate is more for this one. Like that, a plan he made. So what defense mechanism he is using? So the, your options are rationalization, intellectualization, repression, regression. So what is the answer? Yes, the answer is intellectualization. So here what he did was uh, intellectually uh, he made some uh, things. Let's see how he will get out of this stress. Okay. So that is intellectualization and uh, it protects against the anxiety by repressing the emotions connected with that event. And it is also known as isolation of affect. Okay. This uh, intellectualization is also known as isolation of affect as the affective elements are removed from the situation. So your last and final question, a 15 year old boy after the tonsillectomy have seen sucking thumb in between. So what defense mechanism he exhibits? See the age, he is a 15 year old boy after times tonsillectomy he was admitted in the ward and you went to the ward you have seen that he was thumb, uh, sucking his thumb. So what this defense mechanism is? So your options are a regression, sorry uh, it is a repeated a reaction formation and rationalization. So what is the answer? Yes. So the answer is a regression. Okay. So boy went back earlier to the oral stage of psychosexual development to relieve the stress. So his uh, surgery itself is a stressful situation. Okay. And in that set stressful situation, uh, what he did was uh, he has gone back to his earlier stages of development, psychosexual development, because that uh, oral stage, that sucking the thumb. Okay, so I think you are uh, clear about the topic. So uh, these five questions, almost everybody have answered uh, correctly. So we have uh, come through almost uh, 15 to 20 defense mechanisms in this session. I know the session was a little lengthy, but uh, it will take time for you to understand. So what I request you is uh, if any doubts, any doubts uh, regarding this, uh, you are free to ask. You can comment in the comment box and maximum at the level best. Uh, I'll try my level best to explain you back uh, uh, to clear your doubts. And uh, so once again, uh, if you like this video, uh, once again, I'm telling you, you share this video with your nursing friends and it will become very much helpful for you. And as I told in the beginning of the session, uh, definitely you can expect some one minimum one question you can expect from this topic and uh, some defense mechanisms I skipped because that is not as very important concerned with the exams so uh, so keep in mind these uh, defense mechanisms with these uh, examples okay you keep these examples in mind and uh, review this video once again if you have any doubts and still you have doubts you are free you are free to ask in the comments so, um, so uh, once again, uh, thank you for uh, watching the video. I think uh, we can wind up now. So, someone was asking, uh, when was the, uh, when will be the next class? That definitely we will uh, inform you in advance. Uh, then, and Pooja, she was asking uh, some doubt that is these correct. I am not understanding for which question she was asking. Okay, Deepika has commented that the class is good. Okay, I'm very much thankful uh, to you all because this is my first experience in an online platform. So, yeah, these uh, comments are really, really uh, it's encouraging. So, definitely uh, I will come up with uh, new topics, new interesting and uh, important topics uh, uh, in concern with the exams. So, I think uh, we can wind up already. The time is uh, past 8 now, nearly 8.30 now. 
so we will wind up now so once again uh, thank you for watching the video so uh, stay tuned stay tuned with the nurse study well prepare well prepare well and uh, aim for heights okay thank you